Hey, welcome back to Well.com, home of TIG time. I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're going to start a series of welding aluminum with the DC process. Yes, I said the DC process. It's called the lost art of DC minus welding. <clears throat> now, we're going to be using something different in gases. We're going to use 100% helium. Now, that's critical. You're going to try to mix gases. You're going to use argon with a little mix of, of helium. It's not going to work. So you need to know the, the alloys that you can do this process with. Well, first of all, we're going to talk why would you ever want to do that. Now, in aluminum welding, you've got the oxide layer, and you've got AC and, and cleaning. The square wave works really well. This particular case, we're going to talk about heavy wall material. And when I say heavy wall, we're talking about quarter inch, three-eighths or half inch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to weld this butt to butt. There's going to be no gap in it whatsoever. Now, I'll tack it, and then I'm going to place it on top of the ceramic that has a little groove in the back. So that groove is going to allow the penetration to fall through. So here's, here's what it's going to look like as far as a fit-up is concerned. And I'll put my gear on and tack and show you that. But I want to go to the machine settings because the machine is going to be set on DC negative. Now, I'm going to be using 100% helium gas. Now, you may have to turn the gas up just a little bit because it tries to float away. Use a pointed tungsten. It, it's almost like welding stainless steel, but you're using helium. Now, there is absolutely no cleaning action that takes place with the DC process, so you have to uh, acclimate your eyes to this puddle. And the best way to get started is to do it a bead on plate just the first time. And what you're going to see is the oxides stay on top. They don't clean off. They don't mix in with the, with the regular puddle, but they'll lay right on top. And you actually break through the crust. And with the helium gas being so hot, it'll penetrate and you'll have more penetration than you can imagine. So it's going to take me probably about 180 amps to penetrate this material. 180 amps or less. So in the beginning, sit and dwell for just a few seconds, and you'll actually see the penetration take place. Now, you can't do this on every aluminum, but I'm going to give you some of the popular aluminums. And this particular aluminum is a 6061, and I don't care if it's a T6 or T4, 6061. Now, I'm going to use filler 4043. If you attempt to use the other filler that's very popular, 53, 56, it's got a little bit of magnesium in it, and all it'll do is look really junky, so you won't succeed. So just keep in mind, 6061 and 4043 filler material. Now, a couple of the other alloys that'll DC well is 1100 series, which is pure aluminum, and there's some other alloys, there's specialty alloys, 2219 aluminum uh, DC wells very well. So let me get my gear on. I'm going to tack weld this, uh, put everything in place, and I'm going to punch through one pass. Okay, you can actually see the helium has got a different glow to it. You gotta uh, really adjust to it. I look for that shiny center right in the middle, because that's the only thing that you're gonna see when you're welding. So I'm just dabbing, adding filler. It's a very, very hot arc. And I can see that it's penetrating now. So I'll just keep adding. And as it fills up, you'll be able to see the puddle again just in the center. About 150 to 180 amps for this. That's about it. Yeah. 
Okay, now the uh, the weld is not a real pretty weld by comparison to what you can get with AC, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and wire brush this. And it, it does get the smut off. And if you were to get an x-ray weld on this, you're probably going to need to do filing and scraping on it just to get the oxides off because the DC process doesn't do that for you. Now you probably noticed that I was wearing a passive helmet and it's because we're using helium. The emissions uh, coming off the helium aren't light enough to change my quick change helmet so you may get fluttering there but uh, this works very well. It's a number 10 shade. Now there's one other feature I want to identify here is if you were to weld this with the AC process you couldn't punch through all the way. You'd have to V prep it and you'd have to do probably a root pass and a fill pass. This process will improve your welding productivity about 300 percent and you can automate it. You can uh, actually time it, you can pulse it, you can add filler material to it. So uh, there are some applications that you can use this for and it's great. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.